You interested in Affinity Designer but not sure you're ready to leave Adobe Illustrator yet? Well, these are the 10 things that you need to know if you're gonna make that switch. The thing that initially drew me to Affinity Designer is the fact that it only costs $50. At first glance, Affinity Designer is a lot like Adobe Illustrator, but as a longtime Illustrator user, the little differences between these programs really tripped me up at first. So to celebrate the release of my new Udemy course, 75% off, link down below, and promotion, here are the 11 things that will help you make that switch easier. The first thing is the color picker. It works a little bit differently than the color picker in Illustrator. In Illustrator, if you use the eyedropper tool, it grabs everything. You're gradients, your strokes, any styles that you have applied to the shape that you're pulling it from. Affinity Designer works a little bit differently. If I use the eyedropper tool here, it's not going to grab any of the styles. It's just going to grab the color that you hover over. So really, it's behaving like the color picker in most standard painting apps. So what if you're used to grabbing all those styles? Is there a workaround for that? Yes, there is. I'm going to grab my move tool and I'm going to grab the object that has the styles applied to it that I want. If I go over to my palettes on the right hand side and click on styles, I can see them here. Then by clicking this little menu icon, I could come down here and say add style from selection and it has just created that style for me. So now when I select this object and click here, I can pull all of those styles over. The other thing that you're gonna notice right away is just selecting objects. Really easy to click on an object to select it, but if you wanna select multiple objects in Adobe Illustrator, you just take your move tool and you select them. And as long as you grab like just a pixel of that object, it is selected. That's not the case in Affinity Designer. In Affinity Designer, you're gonna have to grab the entire object. Speaking of selecting things, in Affinity Designer, selecting multiple points is a little bit different than Adobe Illustrator. In Illustrator, as long as I'm on the white arrow tool, I can just select what I need and move those points around. Affinity Design is similar, but if I just take my node tool and I drag to select, I can't actually do that. I have to select the object first, then drag over my points in order to grab them. This is such a tiny little thing that I didn't include it, but I was always forgetting it within the first day or two that I was using the app. Number four, I wanna talk about modifying shapes. In Adobe Illustrator, when you draw a shape, you can use your little white arrow tool, grab any node on that shape, any anchor point on that shape, and move it around. It doesn't quite work this way in Affinity Designer. And the reason why is shapes have their own parameters to them. You can see as I draw this star that there are these little red nodes, and when I hover over them, you can see this little red line. That lets me click on that and adjust that shape. I can grab another one and I can change some dimensions there. It's pretty cool and it's pretty powerful. Unfortunately, in order to have these kind of extra effects associated with the shapes, something needs to give. And what gives is how it usually works in Adobe Illustrator with our white arrow tool and anchor points. But don't worry, you can still modify this. In order to do this, you have to first convert any shape that you draw into curves. You could do that by right clicking and going to convert to curves or in this context menu that always appears right here, <laughs> We can go to convert to curves and I can click it there as well. And as you can see, this has created nodes out of that shape. So I can go in and now I can modify it the way you would expect to modify it in Adobe Illustrator. Five, converting nodes. In Adobe Illustrator, if I click and hold on the pen tool, I get some more options. One of those options is my anchor point tool. It's this little wedge shape tool. And if I use that on any of my points, I can use that to turn that into a curve or grab one of my handlebars and adjust it in some way. This tool works a little bit differently in Affinity Designer. In fact, that specific tool doesn't exist at all. Instead, we have some options up here in our convert area. If you're using the uh, white arrow tool or the node tool, you can convert any arc that you grab. You can go up here and you can convert it by turning it into a sharp angle so that any selected nodes turn into sharp angles or I can go here and I can make them all smooth angles. So any node selected becomes smooth angles. Once I uh, turn something into a smooth angle, I can come in here and I can adjust the curve as I need to. Six, I wanna talk about layers. Layers work differently in Affinity Designer than they do in Illustrator. It's actually similar once you get the hang of it, but at first it, it looks a little off. Every time I go into Affinity Designer and I draw a shape, you're gonna see over on the right-hand side of my layer palette, each one of those creates a new layer. That's probably not the way to think about it because you can come down here and you can create your own layer if you'd like to. And in fact, I can take all of my things and drag them on here and now they are all part of that layer. Now if I create another layer, 
This is a good way to group things while you're creating your illustration. Those three new shapes I drew are on this layer too. So this works as a nice way to group things. So for example, I could grab one layer and I could move everything at once, or I could grab the other layer and I could move everything at once. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna grab all three of these shapes and I'm going to change their color. I'm gonna make them blue and I'm going to move them around so they overlap with some of my other shapes because there's this one other cool feature in Affinity Designer that I that I do want to point out. In the bottom left-hand corner of my layer palettes, it's kind of hard to see. There's a little icon. If you hover over it, it says Edit All Layers. This is on by default. But if I click that, now I can only edit the objects that are on the layer that I've selected. So since I'm on layer two, if I highlight this entire thing, I'm only gonna select things on layer two. This is great if you're working on a complicated illustration and say you have a background, middle ground, foreground, and you only wanna edit things on that middle ground layer. You can toggle that off and you don't have to accidentally worry about always clicking and dragging on the background. Number seven is the effects. I just like the effects in Affinity Designer, so I wanna talk about them. To show how effects work, we're gonna use this piece that we created in my Affinity Designer crash course. So I'm gonna grab this foreground element here, and there's already a shadow on there, and I could just toggle that shadow on and off in my effects panel over here. I can change the opacity, I can make that drop shadow a lot darker, I can make it a lot lighter. I just like the ability to have my own effects panel right here in the app. And it's really not that different than some of the things you can do in Illustrator, but I I think the way it's executed is done really well. So for example, if I grab the background, I can go over here and I could add a uh, Gaussian blur to give it some depth perception. If I want it way in the background, I could blur it way out or I could bring it in till it's just kind of visible but still blurry. But even though it's blurred out, I can still double click in here and I could grab my layers and, and move them around. So the effects work extraordinarily well here. Number eight is raster stuff. There's this concept in Affinity Designer called personas. In the upper left-hand corner, we are currently in the draw persona. That's like our vector persona, but there's also a pixel persona and there's also an export persona. I'm gonna click on the pixel persona and what this allows us to do is add all sorts of raster or bitmap effects. If I zoom in here on my zombie, you can see I've already added some effects on top of my vectors. So let me scroll up to zombie's head here and let's try some stuff out. Now that I've clicked into his head, I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna add a pixel layer. So there's, there's vector layers and there's pixel layers. Now I'm gonna grab my paintbrush and now I can come in here and I can spray paint in a little bit of texture, you know, right along the side of his head just like that. And if I want to, I could make it a lot lighter. Let's grab a lighter color and I could come in on the other side of his head and add, add a little highlight. Now this works just like a Photoshop brush. It is not a vector brush. And so I'm adding these textures and if I want to, I could just drag it down here and it becomes a mask just on that layer. And then I could come over here. I'm gonna close this thing really quick. And when I change the opacity and some of the blending modes, I've added a little bit of texture. But what's great about Affinity Designer is you can use this like a traditional drawing program. It has everything you need, selections and brushes, erasers, paint bucket tools, all of that stuff. How I used to work is I go to Adobe Photoshop, I'd maybe sketch something out that looked like a pencil sketch, I'd pull it into Illustrator, I would trace it out, create all my vectors in Illustrator, then I'd move my vectors back over to Photoshop and add a whole bunch of layers and effects. And now in Affinity Designer, you can do all of that in the same program. Number nine, snap settings. Sometimes when you're using a program and you're drawing shapes, you're like, why is it snapping there? Why is it not snapping here? Sometimes when you're using a program and you're drawing shapes, you're saying, why is it snapping here, but it's not snapping there? And it could get really frustrating and confusing sometimes. When snapping works really well, it's awesome. And when it doesn't, it is frustrating. And one of the great things about Affinity Designer is up here, there is a little magnet icon and if I click on the arrow next to it, it gives me a whole bunch of granular options for how objects and shapes snap to each other. First of all, it's really easy to click this magnet and toggle all snapping on and off, but you could go way into detail. You could snap to grid, snap to guide, snap to the spread, snap to margins. And then even below that, you can snap to gaps and sizes, snap to shapes and key points, snap to object geometry. You can even force pixel alignment. So all of these options are right here and you can toggle them on and off. You can even create presets. So if you're drawing one kind of thing, you can work one way, 
draw on something else, change to a different preset. Number 10 are our geometry tools. In Adobe Illustrator, these are called Pathfinder tools. Here in Affinity Designer, they're called geometry tools. And just by selecting some things, you'll see up in the upper right, we have a whole bunch of options. We have add, we have subtract, we have intersect. Basically, these work identically to what you're used to in Illustrator, but they're already exposed for you. So once you learn what these icons do, you can say add, okay, now that's one shape. I can grab these two shapes at the same time. I can say subtract. Now I've cut a hole in that. I could grab these three shapes and go over to intersect and change those around. All of that is here. It's just called something different and it's located in a different spot. And number 11, just a little bonus one for you. I wanted to talk about gradients and transparencies and how those work because they're kind of cool. The easiest way to get a gradient is to use this tool over here on the left hand side called the fill tool. What's cool about that is once I have a shape selected, I just have to click on that shape and drag and I can create my gradient. If I don't like it, I can click and drag from another point and create it there. And then there's this little line in the middle that lets me change my start and end point for my gradient. In my context bar, there's a little block that lets me open up my gradient and play with it a little more. I can change it to an elliptical gradient. I can change it to all sorts of things, my conical gradients. You can go crazy. The other thing I have is a transparency tool, which works similarly. So if I grab this shape, hold on, let me make it bigger so it kind of covers over part of that. Now over here on the left, I'm gonna grab my transparency tool and now it works just like the gradient. I can drag and click. I could change the choke point on that gradient. I can make it go down further. If I don't like it, I just drag and click it again. And there you go. Now I have transparencies and gradients. So those are my tips. If you're jumping into Affinity Designer and you're used to Adobe Illustrator, those are some things you should know. It's all I've got. If you've been using Affinity Designer for a long time or you just want to pass along your own tips, let me know down in the comments below. Or if there's something in Affinity Designer where you're like, just how do I do that? Let me know that in the comments as well. That's all I've got for today. I'll see you guys next time.